like to look at the second half of Ephesians, chapters 4 through 6. These chapters are organized around a verb, peripateo, which means I walk or I live. Now, to understand these chapters, you need to understand that they've been anticipated by a thesis statement found earlier in the letter. And I just want to read that because it provides a critical context and an avenue to understand the importance and the focus of these chapters. The thesis statement for Ephesians is in 2, 8 through 10. And particularly, I want to look at verse 10, where Paul says, For we are God's workmanship, created or founded in Christ Jesus upon good deeds, which God prepared in advance in order that we, the church, would walk in them. Now, the verb walk is found also there. And so, basically, we get a vision that God has always intended to found a people upon the example of Christ, upon the good deeds that He accomplishes, and that He wants us to walk in like, likeness of Christ. And this really relates to the theme of imitatio Christi, the imitation of Christ, which is found all through the New Testament. In Ephesians, it, it really reaches a mature uh, statement in, in chapters 4 through uh, 6. For example, in chapter 4, we're to, work, we're, we're to walk worthily of the calling. And there are seven ones, one body, one spirit, just as you were called, and one hope, if you're calling, and one Lord. This is the center of the seven ones. One faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. So the one Lord is in the center. Also, as Christ gives gifts to people, he, he, he gives gifts of, of apostles and teachers and evangelists and pastors. You know that passage. But the purpose of giving these gifts is so that the, the saints would be equipped for the work of service. There's that word again, work, good deeds, good work, to the building up of the body of Christ. Now, this building up has to do with both numerical building, but also moral fortification, moral formation. And now look at what verse 13 then says. So we're, we're, there's this purpose of equipping the saints for works of service to build people up, verse 13, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, the perfect man, to the fullness of the stature which belongs to the fulfillment of Christ. So the goal of the whole church is to bring everyone along until we reach this unity of faith and knowledge in the Son of God, the perfect man, and the Christ. Now these three titles are three major political titles in the ancient world. Son of God was being hailed of the emperor. Uh, the perfect man relates to kind of a philosophical ideal of a, a philosophical king. And Christ, of course, is the Greek of the Hebrew, Messiah. You see, what Paul is really getting at here is that we have been given a head as a body of believers, a head to which we are all to grow, into whom we are to grow. And this language of head body relates to political terminology of the first century being applied to the, uh, of the Emperor Nero. His uh, philosopher, court philosopher Seneca wrote a treatise to him when he became emperor and basically said, be merciful, Nero, because you are the head and the Roman people are your body. And so Paul is laying out an alternative vision here for the church to radically imitate and put on Christ as, as, as an example for them to live, to put on Christ. It's also seen then radically in, in chapter 4 in verses 20 through 24. But you did not learn Christ this way, Paul says. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught in him, just as the truth is in Jesus. Now, Jesus and Christ are referred to four times in that verse. And Paul uses a verb in verse 20, the verb that's translated learn. Well, that verb learn is the, the Greek verb for the, the word, the noun that we translate as disciple. Now, what's interesting about that word disciple, the noun, is it's not found outside of the Gospels. But what we do have is the verb equivalent of that, manthano. It's found right here. Paul is talking about discipleship right here, and this discipleship has to do with learning Christ. Now, Paul indicates that in Jesus is the truth and that people were taught in Jesus. And the content of that teaching then is specified in verses 21 and 23, through 23, so verses 21 to 23, um, that in reference to your former manner of life, 
you lay down your old self, which is being corrupted in accordance with the lusts of deceit. Secondly, that you be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Renewal of the mind. The third step, the third thing that you're taught is to then put on the new self, which is created in the likeness of God in holiness and righteousness of the truth. Basically, Paul describes a three-step pattern of how to learn the Christ, putting off the old self, being renewed in the spirit of one's mind, and putting, off the, uh, putting on the new self, which is created according to God. So there's a radical imitation of Christ right here, and this culminates then in, in 5.1, where Paul says, therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love just as Christ loved us and gave himself for us as an acceptable offering. Here we've reached kind of the, the mother load of maybe the whole of scripture, that we are called to be holy and to be like God. And this has been revealed to us definitively now in Jesus as our political ruler, as the one that we aspire to as a body, as a community. And we are particularly to imitate him in terms of love and love leading to concrete action of giving ourselves sacrificially to one another. So in Ephesians then, Paul has laid out this very uh, graphic and vivid depiction of the Christian life and the functioning of the body to be built around the person of Jesus as our head, as the one that we aspire to be like and imitate. And this is very well pleasing to God. And this is the hope and calling of the church today.